I, I spent almost two years in England before they had the invasion. And so they selected our group to go in on the beachhead there. And, um, and so we had to go with them. And so um, uh, I, got on, I got on the boat and started over and it was pretty nice. But when I got on the other side, we had to climb over the side and get on a landing craft and way to shore. And, the Germans were shooting at us, and we, all our ships were shooting at them, and so bullets were going over us, and we, we were going on these landing craft. So we got over there and got, got landed, and uh, took over an old French farmhouse, and, and um, knocked down some roads and there and so forth, and made a little run, runway for the B-17s. In Normandy there, they had all kind of foxholes and everything. And we'd, we'd set up pup tents to live in, and and we we dug. I had a trench right behind my little pup tent, and then they'd they'd fire rocket rains on it. And you'd hear a shot coming, and you, you'd stop a minute. And it's going to hit short. It's going to go over your head, or you're going to hit it with you. Or you could tell the the sound of the thing. So if it sounded like it's coming close, boy, you roll out and got in that hole, and it hit somewhere around you there. He was uh, initially signed to the Saratoga, which was CV-3. And that, that CV-3 lets you know what a low number it is. The Saratoga was a Lexington-class carrier, but it was one of the first carriers. And actually, the Navy had developed its carrier tactics just before the war by using the Lex and the Saratoga as the, the ships to to prove what they were going to do. His battle station on the Saratoga was the anti-aircraft guns. So you know, he's, like all line officers, he took his time at the helm and doing various things. But when battle stations sounded, his uh, task was to uh, command the anti-aircraft guns. I guess you could say the war made us a big petrochemical complex here and it's responsible for the great economic development that's going on here right now. You know, the, the first plant here was in the late 1930s, Matheson Alkali, but then you had City Service and Sitcon and Firestone, they all came in here and mainly because of the war effort. And of course they grew, you know, tremendously after the war, but it really fueled our local, it made us a, the industrialized area here really did.